new guitar. I've had this had this guitar now for like two weeks, and I must say I'm really extremely happy with it. Uh, it's something that I've been wanting for maybe 15 years. I've been wanting a seven-string guitar, and I could never find one anywhere. I couldn't find anybody to build me one, or either that, or I couldn't afford to buy one, or you know, like one thing or another. But I finally got one that works good, and it's got a high A string on it. It's, uh, you know, I guess you could say it's tuned kind of like a lute, like if you're going to play like lute music, uh, uh, you might have a high A string on top. Uh, it was made in, in Laguna Beach by a guy by the name of Kirk Sands. I use a number eight E string on top, uh, and it's tuned to high A. And how I get it that high is it's like a shorter scale neck. Instead of a longer neck, it's got a shorter neck. At first I had one built and uh, and the neck was too long and the string kept breaking. So I had to tune the whole guitar down a tone. So I tuned it to D and had a high G note on top. But then every time I played with a bass player, I was always in a different key than he was in. So that was kind of a hassle. <laughs> And, you know, I had to transpose, and then I started putting a capo on the second fret. But then all the dots were in the wrong place. <laughs> I was going crazy. So I finally got this one. I really feel good about it. I'll play something up tempo. This is a, this is a McCoy Tyner tune called Visions.
How did you meet Lenny? I met Lenny uh, through John Knowles uh, in Nashville. Lenny was staying in Nashville. George Dauphiné, who who had Dauphin guitars, they made a and, and by the way they had a seven string nylon string acoustic that they dubbed Lenny Bro model, and Lenny did some promo for him and stuff. And I was friends with George and, and partners with George, so I was in Springfield at the time for a couple weeks getting ready for the show. We drove down to Atlanta, and on the way down we f- went through Nashville. Well, Lenny was staying with John at that time, so oh. that's where I kind of met him, you know, and then and then. I went on the next morning. We went on to, down to Atlanta and, and set up and got ready for the show. Two days later, Lenny and, and Richard came down to the show. You know Richard Cotton, mm-hmm. okay? He and Richard and Lenny um, came by the, my booth at the Nam show in Atlanta, and we uh, decided to build him this special seven string guitar. Right. And he'd been experimenting with seven strings. And he had some ideas, and Richard was kind of helping him because Richard's a good player, and he knows a lot about guitars because he was, a, you know, a, a guitar store owner, and he knew, you mm-hmm. know, some things about it anyway. So then uh, I started talking to Lenny about this um, seven-string guitar I was going to build him, and, and I did, and I built it. it. Took about eight months or so. Okay. Now, was Lenny really was he really hip to guitar construction, or did he just have sort of vague ideas that he put to you, and you actually translated it back to him? I mean. Uh, it's sort of that way. He wasn't real guitar t- technically uh, uh, educated. Uh, he knew what he wanted, but he didn't know why you couldn't do it this way, and you had to do it this way. He didn't know why necessarily, right. you know. So you know, he wanted this, a steel string electric with a high A on top, right? Like a Les Paul with a high A on top, you know, sort mm-hmm. of a thing. And um, and, you, and you can't do that with a, with a regular scale length. So I had to shorten the scale length up to like twenty two and three quarters. So you want to tune that string up to an A. The, if if the if you have a regular scale length, it's too long, and your string won't won't. It'd be like taking your first string mm-hmm. and tuning it up to a high A, which is gotcha. a fret first string. Uh, you get up to about the G, maybe the G sharp, and get towards the A, and boom, it snaps on you. Okay. Yeah. So you had to shorten the scale in order to get that high note. Right. Okay. See? It it has some features like recessed uh, controls on it. And that. Was that was that Lenny's idea? Those well, kinds of yeah, things? he liked he liked that control. He liked the volume control being those because um, I went to great lengths to to, to get that. Um, had to get those from Fender. They're like what you put on a Jazz Master or a Jaguar. Hmm. All it is is it's just a, a potentiometer turned on its side. And the knob is like a thumb wheel and comes up, to, you know, and rises slightly above the surface, just like on a Jaguar or a Jazzmaster. And uh, he le- and, and when he he could move it back and forth with his little finger and get kind of a tremolo thing. Oh, okay. You know, turn the volume up and down. Okay. Or the tone. See, he... Right. As opposed to a knob, you can't do that. You know, you can't just rub your finger up against it and have it go back and forth as easily as when it's a... A thumbnail. I mean, a thumb um, wheel. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he liked that. So I, when I went to all the trouble to get getting that kind of uh, hardware. I remember driving up to to a Fender when they were up in Fullerton at the time, and, and acquiring the electronics. Did he have any idea about like neck width or anything like that? I mean, I know it would have to be wide to accommodate the seven string, but did he? It say, was wider. Yeah, yeah. actually, uh, Richard Cotton worked that out with oh, me. Oh, okay. See, Richard did know about stuff like that. Right. So he gave me some measurements. And, you know, actually all it was was just a pretty wide neck, like a classical, you know, maybe a little bit narrower than a classical, but add the seventh string. So, you know, so if you just make a regular six-string classical width neck and then add on whatever the thickness of the, the distance of one second to first string again. So it had quite a wide neck. It uh, had two pickups, that guitar? Yes. Yeah, so Seymour right. Duncan made the pickups for me. Okay. And that was probably another thing that Lenny didn't know a lot about. But no, he okay. didn't. He didn't know anything about yeah. pickups. Not a gearhead. <laughs> Not a gearhead. No. Okay. So he and did what live... did he say when you gave him the guitar and he sat down and played it for the first time? Was he really excited about it? Or oh did he... yeah, yeah. You know what? He sat down to play it and just played it like he would had it all his life. Right. You know, and he, it was always funny to watch him play. George Dauphin and I both noticed this. You know, he. 
we had lots of guitars around, and he was always we'd, we'd come back after the NAMM show, and we'd have some cocktails, and and we'd start playing and jamming and playing some tunes, and he'd play and he'd play like on a six string guitar. He'd been playing a six string guitar there, sitting in and some, and then and then then he goes, hey, somebody give me my guitar, you know, and I go get his guitar and hand it to him. Or he'd pick up that Dauphin nylon string, seven string, which you could tune up to a high A with a fishing line for a mm-hmm. first string. Right. But he would he would kind of falter for just a minute or, or thirty seconds to a minute, and and then all of a sudden you could see his his eyes would his brain would click. And right. Then, and then and then boom, he was into the seven string mode, and and then he just used that melody string like a like a guitarist uses his first string. Right. See, uh, he used that melody string on top as opposed to the bottom seventh string, which is a real kind of a simplified, simplified way of playing a seventh string. Is having a low bass note that you play whenever you need it. But Lenny, you know, he, he, his seventh string being that high A, it was involved in the melody all the time. Yeah. So he'd be playing stuff where normally a guitarist would have to go up into the fifth position or seventh or eighth position with their left hand. He'd stay down first position and be playing all those melodies up there. Because mm-hmm. he, he was five frets back. So he picked it up and just took off like crazy. And you know what? The 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 fact that the scale was real short was a was something that I had to do in order to get the string to not break. Mm-hmm. But Lenny had very little hands. Yeah. And he thought I, you know, for example, he thought I made the short scale because he was so short and he had such little fingers. He says, "But Kirk, it just plays so easy." And I go, "Yeah, Lenny, that's because the the scale is extremely short." You know, the distance, you know, I had explained to him what scale is, you know, and, and how, you know, the distance from the nut to the saddle uh, is a certain distance, and the frets all have to be in a certain place according to that. And uh, so it, it, the the fact that it had such a short scale made it so easy to play. The reaches were real, real quick. Well, well, it'd be the same as, like, capoing your guitar at, the, say, the third fret. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually what it was was almost like caping, capoing a classical guitar at the second fret. And you know how it e- how easy it is to play. All the stretches right. are a lot closer at that when you do that. Yeah. So he was really impressed with how easy it was to play because of the short scale, um, and and that sort of served two purposes. In other words, it, it made it easier to play, and it made made it uh, possible to achieve the high A. So yeah, it, it, so it was it, man. He just flipped out and <laughs> just played that guitar, loved that guitar. I mean, he mm-hmm. just. He could play anything on that guitar. He, he he said he said I can't really play other guitars anymore now. Really, I mean I, I I can, but you know this, it's not my instrument anymore. You know this is my instrument, which is the short scale high A. I was making him when he died, a a new guitar. Yeah, it was a double neck, and it had his seven string like his guitar had already made him, on one neck, and the other neck was. Like a twelve string uh six string guitar, but the strings like on a twelve string are grouped close together in pairs of two right this one he wanted the strings a little further apart down on the right hand so that he could individually pick just the one little string neck and not the big one right yeah. okay so so then so then he could play he didn't have to use. So in other words, he could play a bass note that was an octave higher than what you normally would have there. And before, he would have to utilize his index finger to use it to play a harmonic on that bass note, which raises the note an octave. Right. And then with his middle ring and little finger, play a three-note chord. So he was playing a bass note that was thrown up an octave with his index finger pointing out the harmonic and plucking it with his thumb pick and right. then the upper three notes of that four note chord were his other remaining three fingers I get you. little finger right? right well if but see if i made that guitar that was like a 12 string he wouldn't have to get that harmonic note on the bass it would be it would be already an octave higher and then he could play a four note chord on top with that bass note being an octave higher not too much different than that nashville tuning yeah sort of like that so yeah. he was on to something there, <laughs> but so, uh, never made it. I mean, I, I I made the template and I got the wood and all that stuff, but he he died before we ever got started. Uh, 